This Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of Anita J. Fuentes and Maria Ilagan O'Connor, and for the special intentions of the Valiente family, Imelda Wee, and Colin Joseph Pereira. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, perseverance in obeying your will, that in our days the people dedicated to your service may grow in both merit and number. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. Hear my prayer, O Lord, let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me. Answer me speedily in the day when I call. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. The nations will fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth your glory. For the Lord will build up Zion. He will appear in his glory. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and will not despise their prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. Let this be recorded for a generation to come so that a people yet unborn may praise the Lord, that he looked down from his holy height. From heaven, the Lord looked at the earth to hear the groans of the prisoners, to set free those who were doomed to die. O oh Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the people, I am going away and you will search for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. Then the Jews said, is he going to kill himself? Is that what he means by saying, where I am going, you cannot come? Jesus said to them, 
You are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins, for you will die in your sins unless you believe that I am he. They said to him, who are you? Jesus said to them, why do I speak to you at all? I have much to say about you and much to condemn, but the one who sent me is true, and I declare to the world what I have heard from him. They did not understand that he was speaking to them about the Father. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am he, and that I do nothing on my own, but I speak these things as the Father instructed me. And the one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I, for I always do what is pleasing to him. As Jesus was saying these things, many believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. At my previous parish in Bradford, um, one of the permanent deacons that worked with us there, he was deathly afraid of snakes. Um, so much so that the kids in youth ministry knew this and they loved to pull little pranks on, on poor, the poor deacon uh, by putting little toy snakes around here and there or uh, what have you. And, but so much so to the point that if he saw a picture of a snake on his phone, he'd throw the phone away. It was, it was so repulsive and frightening and what have you and just did not like snakes. Um, so much so that even in this particular part of the book of Numbers, he, he was so like when he heard the Israelites had to look upon the serpent, he said, oh, I couldn't do that. I wouldn't be able to do that. And I often wondered why, like why, what's, what's the innate fear or what have you, and I, I've never asked him why, but I think there is some sort of abhorrence or this um, disgust or fear or whatever when it comes to serpents. Here in our gospel, you know, Jesus is speaking about his death once again, and ultimately what's going to happen, he's going to be lifted up on the cross as we know as we go forward in, in, the, in the story um, and as we know in history. And I think just as de the deacon had this repulsion of the serpent and these things, I think we have somewhat a repulsion of the cross at times. I think whenever we see the cross, not necessarily our Lord's cross, but whenever we carry crosses or look upon even the Lord's cross, uh, we're, we're often repulsed at times. We're often disgusted. We're often frightened by it. Maybe that's why, you know, when, when Jesus spoke of his death and, and Peter rebuked him, I, I think that moment Peter was afraid of the cross. I think there is a deep fear or, or, or um, yeah, a fear of what that it looks like. But the reason I think we have this fear of it is because of what it, of how it came to be. You know, and next week and when we begin Holy Week, um, Good Friday, we listen to the Pasha reading rather than the Sunday as well, we're going to see the drama unfold or hear about once again the drama unfolding. And what leads Jesus to the cross is, is every sin comes out of every corner and, and, and basically attacks him. And we see the, the, I guess, the worst, if you will, of the human race both in all forms of sin, through betrayal and anger and lying and all these things, we see it in full force coming out to the Lord, which ultimately put him on the cross. So whenever we look upon the cross, I think what happens is that we see our sins. We see our failings. We see, um, we see ourselves in, in, in sin itself. And maybe that's why we're so... Ugh to it. But at the same time, you know, we remember the words that, of our Lord, he is the one who lays down his life. No one can take it from him. He lays it down freely. There's no greater love, says the Lord, than to lay down his life for one's friends. 
And not only do we see then perhaps sin that, is, that leads us or that is on the cross, we ultimately look upon the one who is on it, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. We look upon the one who is everlasting mercy, the Lord of Lord, the light of light, the Prince of Peace. It is on the cross where we not only see sin, but there we see redemption at hand. We see redemption, we see mercy, we see love incarnate. And as much as at times we fear the cross or are afraid to look upon it or afraid to even um, admit what we've done at times right, from our sins, we turn to the cross nonetheless because when we look upon the Son of Man, when we look upon the Lamb of God, when we look upon divine mercy, we know that despite our sinfulness, despite our failings, despite our weaknesses, it is through the cross we are redeemed. It is through the cross of Christ we find salvation. It is through the power of Jesus' cross that we are healed and forgiven and loved. As we end Lent, as we go towards the end of Lent, we are looking now closely and more attentively and more intently, rather, on the cross. We look to the hill of Calvary, which is going, which we're going to reflect and meditate and, and pray on in the days to come. Do not fear the cross, but rather look upon it, look upon the eyes of Christ, look upon his sacred heart, and trust and know that mercy and forgiveness and love is at hand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, that being moved to compassion, you may both pardon our offenses and direct our wavering hearts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, 
Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and a desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that ever seeking what is divine, we may always be worthy to approach these heavenly gifts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.